Hey guys, welcome to Wine and Controversy. It's your girl, Ray. And today we have a special guest, my dear friend, Cameron J. Hello, everybody. I just want to say I'm excited to be here. We are about to um, try to drop some gems on y'all. We were just talking off camera, asking God to use us. Amen. We're going to be some vessels for y'all today. All right. We're going to start off by allowing Cameron to tell us a little bit about himself, because although I know who he is, some of you may not. Well, my name is Cameron James Henderson. That's where Jay come from. Um, I live in Atlanta currently. I grew up in Oklahoma. Like, hence the friendship <laughs> with Raven. Um, yeah, I make YouTube videos. Uh, I try to combine comedy and music on my channel and just, you know, try to keep it lit. Uh, keep it short. Cute, cute, cute. Yeah. So, um, today we're going to get all of tea. We're going to get in all the mix of Cameron J because I know a lot of you want to know what's going on in Cameron's world or clear, clarity on some things that you feel like your relationship might need. We're going to have that for you today. Right here on Wine and Controversy. All right. So, Cameron, um, the first question I'm going to ask you is, what do you consider a date and what would your ideal first date be? I consider a date anything that is defined as a date. So if both the people say this is a date or if one person asks the other person, do you want to go on a date, then it's a date. It don't matter if you go to McDonald's or Red Lobster or out of the country, which I don't recommend. But, <laughs> you know, if it's defined as a date, it's a date. You know, recently on Facebook, we had a big uh, uproar about the $25 K Jewelers ring that was on sale. People were saying that they did not want to get proposed to with a ring that's $25. And some people were saying those people that are complaining about the price of the ring are the same people who aren't receiving a ring. True. That that could very well be facts. But also you have to understand, my grandparents as an example, he gave my grandmother a rubber band <laughs> until he could get a ring. So... It's not about the ring, it's about the love, people. Come right, on. right. And you know, for me personally, like, if you don't have the money to give me a ring that you feel that is, you know, fitting for me, mm -hmm. you know, we can work something out. We can work um, something out. I'm definitely a woman who likes jewelry, so, you know, we can, you know, I can work with the $25 ring. That ring was cute. Um, but just know we're going to get something else a little bit later. And, and to answer your question about um, what my ideal first date would be, I, I'm not really picky. As you know. Right. Because, see, people don't realize that you can have such a connection with somebody sitting in the parking lot. Yeah, that it doesn't matter where, where y'all are at. Right. Like, Facts. as long as y'all are together. Yeah. So. See, why am I drinking my wine more than you, Raven? Come let, on. Let me, let me get some wine in me. Because, you know, if I get too much wine, you're going to be telling all your business. So, the burning question of the evening. Okay. Are you single? No. I am not. Mm. That's about as much information as I'm willing to give on that. But I am not, and I am happy. So what's some advice that you would give to people going into new relationships or um, <sighs> embarking on a new journey with someone? Boundaries. Boundaries, 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 boundaries. Boundaries. Listen, <laughs> you have to set clear boundaries. People violate you when you don't have clear boundaries. So if, if we're in a relationship, right? Mm-hmm. And you get mad because I like somebody's picture on Instagram and it turns into this big thing, but you never told me that I couldn't like people. You get what I'm saying? Right. You have to... Write the vision, make it plain. Amen? Amen. But my thing is, it's kind of hard because you don't want to just sit down and be like, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. A lot of boundaries are created along the way when something happens, but a lot of people are afraid to speak up and set the boundary and say that this, this bothered me. You know, this bothered me. This is what we need to do going forward to keep me from being uncomfortable and ultimately me breaking up with you. Okay. Because if, like if you guys knew Cameron like I knew Cameron, you would know. Cameron is the biggest break upper person. Well, I, it's not even, I think I just run a tight ship, you know. I, I yes. have boundaries and I have standards and I don't feel like I'm being unreasonable because I'm involved. So you have to know that you matter and that what you want matters. And one thing I do respect about Cami Bear is that he does set the boundaries and he allows you to know this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm not going to do. So when he does leave, you can't be surprised or be trying to figure out why. Yeah, it won't be like, oh, you tripping. No, because we talked about this. I'm very big on communication. Communication is just as important as boundaries, honestly. 
but you just have to know that I don't boundaries. That is all. Okay. Because so, I could go all day on that. Okay. You know, I do believe that boundaries are important because if you don't set boundaries, then you set yourself up for not being able to truly come at a person on things that you feel are out of order because yeah. you don't know the boundary. So you can't really draw the boundary after it's already been crossed. That part. Some people wait till it's too late. Like you let him do this thing 20 times and now on the 21st time you want to be upset. And that's just not, not, not the way it's supposed to go. Okay, okay. So let's get into a couple questions about your um, career. Okay. What drove you to go into the YouTube business, music, artistry? I really was just always in love with music. I was always in love with music. And I didn't know that, oh, I'm going to be a YouTuber. Like, it wasn't even a thing when I was maybe like 10 years old. So... I just somewhere along the way stumbled into it. There were people in high school that were doing YouTube videos. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I can do that. So I started doing it, and it just turned into what I do. I don't know. But I always just loved music, so that was the base. Right. And speaking of your music and relationships and all those things, we're going to talk about a couple of your songs. Okay. And where your head was. Ooh, you okay. Songs. Never did this before. Okay. <laughs> so one of my personal favorite songs is You Ain't Real. Mm. And You Ain't Real, if you guys have not checked it out, you know, you can look it up on YouTube, Tales of the Scorpio. And um, you can listen to it. But a few of the lyrics are, um, you ain't real, you ain't real, you ain't real. You ain't real. Because you can't tell me what we're doing here. Mm. You ain't real, you ain't real. Because you ain't really the nigga you say you is. So... For me, that song resonated me because at the time, I was going through. Through. All the way through. And, <laughs> and you got to go all the way through it. Like, oh, I don't mean, baby. You can't whoa. go halfway through Shut it. Shut down, no, no, no. You got to go all the way through it. And that's what a lot of people don't understand, too. You have to mentally make sure you come to terms and understand everything that God is trying to teach you. Because if you don't. When the situation presents itself again, mm -hmm. you're going to do the same thing. Because you, you didn't go all the way through you it. You got to go all the way through it. You got to feel it. And hey, you got to hey. know where you are in it. I believe that. So where were you at mentally when you wrote that song? It sounded like you were a little... Sad. Really, to be honest, I write from the perspective of other people. It does sometimes have to do with me. But I'm always thinking about what's relatable. Um, and I know that from my experience, a lot of people are not real. They can't be... 100% and just say, this is what I want, this is what I don't want, which is just what, this is the type of person I am. I'm very like, what are we doing? Because I got this at five and this at six and I got to know what I'm doing. I don't like situations that are like up in the air. So that's where you ain't real came from. Like, tell me what we're doing because I like you. So, what okay. are we doing? And one of my other personal favorites is a new friend. Mm. And I would just love to know, That's a throwback. You know what was going on when that song was written because another line from that song is, I hope you're happy with your new friend. Mm. Hope you had a good time. And I hope... They break your heart. Break, break it, it like, like you, you broke, broke mine. mine. Ah! You'll never find another to love you like I love you. Ah. Mm, mm, I mm, hope mm. you're happy with your new friend. Hope you have a good time. My, my. Well, new friend just came from the person that, because I've been in a relationship where I was a little, a little bit, a lot of bit cheated on. So, <laughs> it was it came from that perspective. Like, I hope that this person was worth it, basically. I hope that you had a good time, because it's done. We're over. And I you'll never you, find nobody else. Okay, because it'll never be another me. There will never be. Hello. But you know what? A lot of times, people in getting these relationships, and you know, that's the first thing we say, you ain't never going to find another me. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, and the truth of the matter is, they're going to find somebody else. That's we real. We all will. That's real. But when you're in a relationship, you should try to impact that person's life so much. That's what I want to do. Mm. That when I'm not in your life, you're affected. Because you just missing that link. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, when if I'm in a relationship with you, I want to affect you so much that your day-to-day -day without me is not right. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. And I think for 
Some people, it comes naturally. I mean, I know you, so we know, like, we just, that's what we do. I think you want, to me, you want to help the person that you're with. You want right. to help them grow. You want to help them accomplish what it is that they set out to do and vice versa. And they can support you. You support them. That's what a relationship, to me, is built on, so. Right. So let's talk about, since you are, are you freshly uh, in a relationship or are you newly? About eight months. Okay. So, New record for me. My, okay. My if you didn't, if you knew if what you I If you didn't did. know, okay. Because so, I don't usually make it very long. Since we're but in God this, is good. Um, I guess you're kind of in a, you're not in a little new stage anymore, you know, but you are in a consistent, you know, flow of things in a relationship. So mm -hmm. what are some things that you do to keep it spicy? Spice. I think you just have to do new things and you have to do like scientifically they say you do something that is going to make your heart race with your partner not I'm not talking about physical but i mean something that you both will be nervous maybe a roller coaster maybe um i don't know many examples but something that is taking you out of the norm and kind of making you feel closer to that person by way of maybe like nervousness or you know just take yourself out of your comfort zone with your partner okay okay so for those people who are you know, embarking on a journey of a relationship and they've been in it six, seven months and mm -hmm. things are getting a little slow. You mm -hmm. know, the excitement's not there anymore. Yes. You know, a lot this of people happens. like to put the relationship down at that point. They're like, oh, we, we're we not compatible. It's not working. Yeah. But what people don't realize is relationship is a work That's in real. progress. And, and if you haven't been in a relationship, aka me, if you haven't been in a relationship in a long time, you don't know that. You don't, you never got far enough for the spark to die. You never got, right. you know, but you have to communicate with your partner what's going on. Because what I see a lot in relationships is that people don't say what they think and they tell everybody else but the person that they really need to tell. So, if you have a spark that's dying, communicate that. What's wrong? If, to me, if you've been intimate with somebody, there shouldn't be nothing you cannot say to them. I agree. I feel like a lot of times we are very um, timid and quiet in the wrong relationships. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the person that you should be the closest to, yeah. the person that you should be the most comfortable with, that's the person you are less vocal with and less, um, what am I trying to say? You know, just, you're, you're a lot less uh, aggressive in the situation. And not that you need to be like, ah, aggressive, but just, you know, you need to, if there's something that's wrong, mm -hmm. It should be brought up. And to me, I fund I believe that strength can come from the darkness in your relationship. So all of those things that that you may um, find, what's the, I gotta choose my words carefully, uncomfortable um, stuff that just bothers you. Communicating that with your partner is going to make you stronger if you do it the right way. And I'm also a believer that it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Mm. So that's what I mean when I say the strength can come from the darkness of your relationship. Like the things that you need to work on is what you need to focus on. Because a lot of times people, um, they, they get in a relationship and it's happy and they get used to that. And then like you said, when it gets bad and it's just like gone. But you have to know that you have to consciously be in a relationship. I don't know how to really explain it, but you have to be all in. It's not something that you can be halfway in. And it's not something that you can deal with emotionally the whole way. You cannot live or run a relationship with your emotions. Yeah. Like based on how you feel for that day because you're going to feel different every day. Mm -hmm. And I have the opposite of, I have the opposite issue. I'm very black and white because of I guess maybe because of my career. I'm just like it is or it ain't. But there is some times where emotions are involved and it, there is some color to it. It's not always. You know, because some right. days I can wake up and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so happy. Mm -hmm. I'm so in love. And then the next day I wake up like, uh -uh, not today. And that's real. But the thing is, like those days when you wake up, you have to lean into that. And a lot of times for me, it's leaning into it without the noise of like, but this, but this is wrong. Because I'm a pessimistic person. So I'm, I, in a moment of joy, will automatically, it'll just be washed away with like, but this, but this negative thing happened. But you have to work on, you know, your mind. You have to train your mind to be able to focus. I have a gratitude journal that I used to write in. I don't really write in it much. But the, my New Year's resolution is to start back. Um, but yeah, you have to write, be grateful, write the things that you're grateful for, and just kind of get in the uh, habit of thinking positive. 
Right, right. Especially about your relationship. Okay. 